Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome back to DIY Crafts. This happens every Wednesday from 3 to 3.30ish, give or take. If you were here with us last week, we made some really, really awesome candles using beeswax and coconut oil. So this week, using whatever materials you have left over, we are going to make lip balm, and I'm just going to tell you how to make lotion bars as well, because it's pretty much the same recipe. Um, so in my pot right here, I have my leftover beeswax, whatever I did not use when I made my candles uh, last week. So let me just grab this and show you. So there's my, my beeswax. Uh, so now what I'm going to do, I have approximately a cup, maybe a half a cup of uh, beeswax in here. So I want to add equal parts of beeswax, shea butter, and coconut oil. So I'm going to go right forward and do that. So I have right here organic shea butter. And again, I want equal parts of each. So I'm going to go ahead and add that right to this to start melting it. Um, you may prefer that you, uh, this is completely based on your preference, so you can find recipes all over the place. A lot of them say half a cup of beeswax to one cup shea butter, one cup, cup coconut oil, but you're going to find your own, your own niche here. So my thought to you is start with a little bit, um, maybe start with a half cup beeswax and then do a quarter cup, um, sorry, uh, a cup of shea butter and a cup of coconut oil. Some people like less beeswax. I personally like more beeswax because I don't like having um, melted lip balm or melted chapstick in my hot vehicle um, or in my pocket in the summertime. So for me, the more beeswax, the less it melts. Uh, this makes it a little bit more difficult for it to spread on your lips, but I, prefer that anyway because I think it lasts longer as well. So again, I have about a cup of beeswax in here. I'm adding a cup of shea butter in here and I'm going to add a cup of coconut oil. So I have this coconut oil. Any coconut oil will do. Um, just make sure that it is organic coconut oil and that it actually the ingredients just say coconut oil. Um, sometimes there's fillers in there. So again, I'm going to go ahead and add my cup of coconut oil. And I'm going to let this all melt down. So the really cool thing about coconut oil and uh, shea butter and beeswax is those three ingredients are three ingredients that you can use for multiple things. So coconut oil, shea butter, and beeswax makes a wonderful lip balm. Um, it also makes a really good DIY lotion bar. And what you can do is you can add the shea butter, the um, coconut oil, and the beeswax and pour it into some um, silicone um, containers and then make your own lotion bar. So I will show you what that looks like after I get this melted. Um, those are the top three ingredients. You might want to play around with the ratios until you have the ratio that you prefer. Um, I've played around with it quite often and most of the time what ends up happening is I'll make lip balm. I will have some extra and I'll add it to a recipe that I already started with. So it's a little bit different every time, but for me, I find that really exciting because you never know what you're going to get. Uh, but there's plenty of recipes out there. I like the one part each um, ratio that seems to work really well for me. Um, if it's too waxy and doesn't spread, just drop your, your beeswax content a little bit. So you might want to do one cup coconut oil, one cup shea butter and a half a cup of beeswax instead of one, one, and one. Um, or even three quarters cups of beeswax and then one cup coconut oil, one cup shea butter. 
So while this is melting, I'm just going to show you that I have these chapstick tubes. And then I have this chapstick tube holder. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and insert all of these tubes into this holder. And what this is going to do is it's going to allow me to pour it into these tubes. Um, I bought this kit several years ago off of Amazon. It seems to work really, really well. Um, just make sure that you get the tubes that fit into these holes. Sometimes uh, they're a little bit different. One would think that all chapstick tubes are created equal. They are not. Um, you can also put it in a glass jar. If you have any old eyeshadow containers, those little glass eyeshadow containers, those work great. You have old lip balm containers. Put the lip balm tube in the microwave for like 10 seconds. It'll melt out all that extra lip balm and then put it in the trash, not down your sink, because you don't want to clog your sink. And then you can just reuse them that way. And you can use a funnel instead of this. Funnels work fine. If you don't have a funnel and you don't have one of these, if you have parchment paper or wax paper, you can roll it up and create your own DIY funnel. All right. So I have a bunch of lap chapstick containers. I put them on this thing. And now all I have to do is pour my wax here and then I have this little scraper and I'm going to scrape the wax into these holes and let it sit. I am doing this on a piece of tin foil right here just so I don't make a super big mess because um, as we know wax is not super forgiving and it's serum quite difficult to clean up afterwards. Alright, so we have our three main ingredients. We have the coconut oil, the shea butter, and the beeswax. Again, play around with the ratios. You may like more beeswax. You might want less beeswax. Um, your shea butter and your coconut oil should be one-to-one. -one. That's pretty standard. That works pretty well. Uh, the beeswax is really what you're going to have to mess around with, and that's just whether or not the beeswax is what holds it all together. Otherwise, you're just going to have coconut oil that melts and runs all over the place. Um, so the beeswax is kind of like the glue that holds everything together. Things you might want to consider adding to your lip balm. Um, obviously you can leave it just the way it is. There's nothing wrong with it. Uh, you can add a little bit of honey for flavor. You can also add a little bit of honey for its medicinal properties. Um, honey is a really good natural healer. <clears throat> and then it obviously adds that delicious flavor. You may also want to add some vitamin E. Um, you can buy this at the store. So what I like to do is after everything is all melted and all uniform, I like to stir it up and take it off the heat. And then I want to add my um, vitamin E. So we're just going to stir this up a bit. I'm going to turn my heat up right now. I have it on simmer so my beeswax doesn't get too hot, but right now my beeswax is now concentrated, which is nice. Um, I'm gonna like finish melting this beeswax. I'm gonna let this melt for a minute. I'm gonna grab the lotion bar so you guys can see what it looks like. Lotion bars are the same ingredients once again. Um, beeswax, there's a little bit of honey in here, and um, shea butter and coconut oil and I have a silicone mold right here they're pretty tiny squares and all I did was I added one to one ratio across this board one cup um, shea butter one cup coconut oil and I think I used a quarter cup of um, beeswax so I wanted my lotion to kind of spread a little bit more and then I added a quarter cup of vitamin E, and then you can add a couple drops of essential oil that you like so it smells nice. Um, so you're not just rubbing unscented lotion on your hands, but if that's the way you like it, go for it. It smells just delicious just the way it is. Um, and then all I did is I poured the beeswax contents into my mold, let it sit for a day, and then they pop right out of the silicone mold. And this is what they look like. 
And then all you do is your hand heats up the, the beeswax and melts the beeswax and the coconut oil and the shea butter. And then once that happens, you just spread it over your hands. It is kind of greasy because you're using beeswax, but you'll notice that if you keep rubbing it in, your hands just soak up all that oil and all that beeswax. So that's something you can do with this as well if you're not into the lip balm. Alright, so my beeswax over here is pretty good right now. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to add one tablespoon of vitamin E. I turn the heat off. One tablespoon of vitamin E. And then I really, really like peppermint oil for my lip balm. So I have peppermint essential oil. It's nice and cooling, soothing. It gives you that kind of like tingly feeling on your lips. And I'm gonna go ahead and add just pretty much a whole tablespoon. I do it just a little shy of filling it all the way to the top. And then I can mix that in there. So ladies that are doing this, if you, um, if you like, you can add any essential oil you like to this for that scent. Um, for that tingly feeling, for if you want peppermint, uh, eucalyptus is really good. If you want to tint your lip balm, eyeshadow works really, really well because eyeshadow is made of Fomica powder. Uh, not, yeah, uh, mica powder, sorry. Um, mica powder, it will dissolve here and it'll give it that tinted color. Um, so whatever color your eyeshadow is, add that to it and then ta-da, it'll be what's on your lips. You cannot use food coloring, it doesn't work, I've tried it. It doesn't, um, the wax doesn't absorb it. But what you can do is you can use um, Kool-Aid. So if you have some Kool-Aid hanging out at home, you have that beautiful red cherry color, go ahead and you can add that to this and then that'll work really well. All right, so I'm gonna lift this up and all I'm going to do is I'm going to pour it over my, my things right here. I'm just going to pour it right in those holes and fill up my chapstick tubes. I'm not worried about getting being completely accurate because that's what this tray is for. It's going to allow me to overflow. And I'm also on a piece of tin foil, so if for some reason I overflow too much, I will be saved. So another thing you can do too before you start pouring it into your chapstick tubes, if you're not sure if you're going to like it while it's in this melted state, go ahead and put a little on your lips and see if it's something that you like, if the flavor's right, if the texture's right, um, and go from there. So sometimes when I first started doing this, I did that. And then I just added the flavor. I added more flavor. I added a little bit more peppermint essential oil because it just wasn't enough for me. Um, and there we go. So I'm gonna put this back over the heat. I'm gonna take my scraper and I'm gonna go ahead and scrape along the top to make sure all those containers are filled really nicely. And then all I'm going to do here is I'm going to take the leftovers and put it right back in here. So I scrape the top. It does melt pretty fast. And I'm sorry that you guys can't see this as well as I would like you to, but here we go. Scrape the top. And then what's cool about this is you can transfer or this um, lip balm into a, a mason jar or a other container of your choice. And then when you want a refill where you have more lip balm containers, you can just refill them as you go. Um, lip balm does not go bad. Wax does not go bad. Um, so you should be pretty good. So now that I have my lip balm in a container, in my containers, excuse me. I'm gonna let this sit 
for probably the next eight hours or so. And I am going to let it cool while it's ready to use. And I took a little bit. Pretty tingly, pretty tasty, all around pretty good. So I just wanna show you guys one more thing. Let me take this. Have your lip balm tubes all done. That's what it looks like when it's all clear. You can print out fancy labels, little squares. And then um, they sell labels online, but you can just print them with a regular printer. And then they sell shrink wrap tubes that you can and off ever so slowly. And these shrink wrap tubes are made specifically for lip balm and they have the perforated openings. So it's got that, um, hasn't been um, tampered with seal and then the perforation so you can pop it open. So once you have your label, I'm gonna wrap my label around my thing, my lip balm tube. You can glue it if you want, but you don't have to. And then I'm just going to I'm just going to take my shrink wrap and put it around my tube. So my label is on the inside. It's adjusted to where it needs to be. And now all I have to do, I'm going to move this over. This works best if you have a heat gun, but if you don't have a heat gun, you can just use the flame. Heat gun. Um, what will also work is a, um, a hair dryer. But once you have that done, the shrink wrap is on it. It's got a perforation label right here, so I can just twist this off, and then I know what this hasn't been tampered with. Um, if you're gonna do your label, make sure you put your ingredients on there. Make sure you give it some kind of name, and make sure you put in where it's coming from if you decide to sell it, or if you just want them for family and friends. So I make these for my family, um, and my dog's name is Echo, so it's just called Echo Mint. Um, but then the only thing that's in here is beeswax, coconut oil, shea butter, essential oil, and vitamin E. So there you go. That's your easy do-it-yourself lip balm. There's really not much to it. Uh, you just need a little bit of beeswax, shea butter, coconut oil, some kind of essential oil of your choice, and vitamin E, and a pot that you don't care about. Um, and you can get these lip balm tubes offline. Uh, you can reuse your own lip balm tubes and you can buy this kit to make your own um, for just to make it easy to pour in. Um, the benefit of doing this is you know what's in the lip balm and you know all the ingredients. Whereas if you buy it off the shelves at the store, there's a bunch of things in there that I can't even say out loud. Never mind uh, understand what it is. So there you have it. DIY lip balm. If you want to get crazy, you can do the same ingredient, add a little bit less beeswax, a little bit more shea butter and coconut oil to get your own um, lotion bars. And you just created your own lip balm and lotion bars with one really simple, easy recipe. I hope you like it. Let me know in the comments if you do. And next week, stay tuned. We will be making DIY dragon books. So we're going to leave the kitchen and get into some serious crafting. So you'll need a glue gun, an old book that you are about to throw away because it's either molding, falling apart, whatever have you, and some paint brushes with some acrylic paint. So I'll see you next week.